Okay, so have you ever wondered if you really need to be doing SEO like all the time? You know, it could feel like a chore sometimes, especially when you're busy with a million other things. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm sure I'm not the only one who's had that thought. Right? Oh, definitely not. You're preaching to the choir here. Every business owner I know has been tempted to hit that pause button on SEO at some point. Right. It's like it's working fine right now. Right? Famous last words. Exactly. But today we are diving deep into what really happens when you decide to take a break from SEO. Uh-huh. And to help us unpack all of this, we have marketing veteran Vicki Wu here to share her insights. Welcome to your marketing department with Vicki Wu Marketing. As always, we're talking about the best tips for marketing your small business. Be sure to subscribe to our channel to be notified of our latest updates. Vicki has been in the SEO game for over two decades. Wow. Working with everyone from, you know, giant corporations to small businesses. Mm. What I love about Vicki's advice is that it's not just theoretical. She's actually seen the impact of SEO, both good and bad, firsthand. Yeah, that's crucial, isn't it? Because there's so much noise out there. You know, everyone's got an SEO strategy, a magic bullet, but Vicky cuts through all that with real-world experience. Absolutely, and that's why we love having her on the show. So the big question we're tackling today is a simple one. What actually happens to my website traffic if I stop doing SEO? But as I'm sure you can imagine, the answer is a little more complicated than that. A little more nuanced, shall we say. Exactly. So no easy answers, huh? Well, not exactly. It's not as simple as saying, if you stop SEO, your traffic will plummet tomorrow. Okay. That's a relief to hear. But it's also not something you can just ignore completely. There are definitely consequences to hitting pause on SEO. So it's more of a long game then. Exactly. And the impact can vary depending on a few things. Like what? Well... Think about how competitive your industry is. Are you a pizza place in a small town with no competition? You can probably get away with easing up on SEO for a bit. But in a crowded market, if people are constantly searching for best pizza online, you got to be visible. Right. It's like trying to be heard in a crowded room. The louder you are, the better your chances of getting noticed. Exactly. And it's not just about how loud you are, but how consistently you're showing up. So consistency is key. Got it. Absolutely. And then there's the big elephant in the room, or should I say the Google algorithm in the room? Oh, right. Google's always changing things up. Always. What worked even a year ago might not cut it today. And that's where staying on top of your SEO game becomes so crucial. It's like everyone's trying to hit a moving target, isn't it? Except the target is also learning how to dance. Oh, man. That's a scary thought. But speaking of scary, I know Vicky has some client stories that really drive this point home. Oh, she does. And sometimes those real life examples are just what we need to really grasp the importance of, you know, not messing around with our SEO. 100%. It's one thing to talk about it in theory. Wow. It's another thing entirely to see the consequences play out in real time. Okay, so let's get into it. Hit me with one of these cautionary tales. What's a story that really made you go, whoa, okay, SEO is not messing around? My new book, Pivot to Success, Transforming Marketing Missteps into Milestones, isn't just a book. It's decades of marketing wisdom distilled down into a guide for you, crafted to help you navigate the ever-changing business land. You can find the book on my website, or you can go directly to Amazon and search for Pivot to Success, Transforming Marketing Missteps into Milestones. Grab your copy today because it's designed to help you recover from bad advice. Okay, so picture this. You've got this e-commerce business. They were killing it, making like mid six figures a year, all thanks to their website, which, by the way, had been online since the late 90s. Whoa, the late 90s. Okay, so they've been around the block a few times. They must know what they're doing. You'd think so, right? Right. But here's the thing. They decided to give their website a makeover. You know, freshen things up, bring it into this century. Makes sense. Right. Yeah. Who doesn't want a shiny new website? Exactly. So they hire someone to move everything over to WordPress and accidentally they get their entire website delisted from Google. Delisted? Wait, hold on. You mean their website was completely gone from the search results? Gone. Vanished. Like, poof. It never existed. Oh, no. 
How does that even happen? It was a technical thing during the redesign. One little oversight, boom. Ouch. I bet that wasn't good for business. You think? Remember how I said their revenue was all online? Yeah, yeah. It completely dried up. Completely. Yeah. Like zero dollars for over a year. Oh my God. Are you serious? I'm totally serious. They almost had to shut the whole thing down. See, this is why I have a love-hate relationship with website updates. So what did they do? Were they able to recover? It took Vicky over two years to rebuild their traffic to even half of what it was before. Two years? That's insane. All because of one little mistake. It just goes to show you how fragile things are online, you mm -hmm. know? Especially if you don't really understand what you're doing. It's like... You might not need to be a master electrician to change a light bulb, but you probably shouldn't try to rewire your entire house if you don't know what you're doing. A hundred percent. And this is a great example of why, even if you outsource your SEO, you still need to understand the basics. Right. So you can at least spot potential problems before they become total disasters. Exactly. Okay. Ready for another cautionary tale? Yeah. Okay, so this one's interesting because it's less of a sudden crash and burn and more of a slow, silent decline. Okay. Vicky had this client who was actually seeing great results from SEO. Okay. Like their traffic was way up, leads were coming in, things were looking good. And that's what we like to hear. Everybody loves a good success story. Right. But here's where it gets interesting. They decided, hey, we've cracked the code. We can ease up on the SEO now. Oh, no, I can see where this is going. They got complacent. Exactly. And the thing is, their traffic didn't plummet or anything. It just kind of plateaued. So they probably thought, see, we were right. Probably. But here's the catch. This client was primarily a government contractor, okay. meaning they got most of their business through direct contracts and proposals. Their website was important, but not their main source of leads. Ah, uh, so for them, hitting pause on SEO wasn't as big of a deal. Right. Their business model wasn't as reliant on organic search traffic. So the lesson here is what works for one business might not work for another. Exactly. It's not a one size fits all kind of thing. You can't just copy someone else's playbook and expect the same results. So how do we figure out our own like SEO risk level? How vulnerable are we to hitting that pause button? Well, you don't need to be a marketing whiz to get a good sense of it. One of the best things you can do is actually pretty simple. And Vicky talks about this all the time. OK, I'm intrigued. Lay it on me. Check your data. My data. Yeah, your website data. Most people avoid Google Analytics like the plague. Okay, true. It can be a little intimidating. I get it. But seriously, those numbers tell a story. Okay, so less scary spreadsheet, more insightful novel. Exactly. It's like being a detective for your own website. Oh, I like that. Right. So put on your deerstalker hat, grab your magnifying glass, and look for clues. Clues like what? Like, are there any times when your traffic took a nosedive? And if so, what were you doing or not doing with your SEO around that time? Oh, so it's not just about looking at the numbers themselves, but looking for patterns and connections. Exactly. Maybe you redesigned your website and forgot to tell Google. Or maybe you went on a blogging hiatus for three months. Ugh, guilty as charged. It happens. We all get busy. But these traffic dips can be a huge red flag that something's off with your SEO. And speaking of red flags, another thing Vicky always recommends is doing a little competitor recon. Competitor recon. Okay, I'm really liking this detective analogy now. Right. It's all about gathering intel. So go on Google and search for the keywords you want to rank for the ones that really matter to your business. Got it. Now take a look at who's showing up on that first page. Those are your competitors. And your job is to figure out what they're doing right. So basically it's like, Spy on your competition, but make it legal. Exactly. But it's not about copying the KK. Hey. It's about understanding the playing field and what you're up against. Makes sense. So we've got the website data analysis, competitor recon, any other tools or tactics that Vicky recommends for gauging our SEO risk. You know, if you really want to geek out, there are some super cool SEO forecasting tools. Vicky mentioned ClearScope and Pathmatics. Ooh, fancy. Tell me more. These tools are amazing because they use all sorts of complex algorithms to predict how certain SEO changes might play out down the road. So it's like having a crystal ball for your website traffic. Kind of. It's not magic, obviously. It's all data-driven. But the more information you have, the better decisions you can make about your SEO strategy. This has been so eye-opening. I love how you've broken down this whole SEO risk factor thing. It, it feels way less daunting now. Glad to hear it. But I think it's time for the big, so what? Why does all of this matter to our listeners? What's the key takeaway here? The bottom line, 
SEO is not a one and done deal. Right. It's more like dot housework. Housework. Yes, housework. Stay with me here. Okay. Okay, I'm listening. Think about it. You might not see a huge difference every single time you vacuum your living room. True. But if you ignore it for like six months. Yeah. Yeah. Everyone's going to notice oh, that. Absolutely. No one wants to live in filth digital or otherwise. Exactly. SEO is all about consistency and maintenance. Little efforts over time make a big difference. So it's like forming good habits, just like making your bed every morning or doing the dishes before they pile up. Exactly. And just like there are different levels of tidiness, there are different levels of SEO risk. Some websites are more fragile than others. Right. It's not a one size fits all situation. Exactly. So the takeaway is SEO isn't something you can just set and forget. It takes ongoing attention, adaptation, you know, rolling with the punches as Google throws new curveballs our way. But don't let that scare you. Even small, consistent efforts can have a big impact. A hundred percent. You don't have to become an SEO expert overnight. Just start taking small steps. Mm. Analyze your data. See what your competitors are up to. Maybe check out one of those fancy forecasting tools. Every little bit counts. Well, this has been incredibly insightful. Thank you so much for sharing Vicky's wisdom with us today. My pleasure. Always happy to talk SEO. And there you have it, folks. We've debunked some SEO myths, learned some valuable lessons from Vicky Wu, and most importantly, we've given you the tools to assess your own SEO risk. So until next time, keep exploring, keep learning, and keep those websites thriving.